Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Age. So, in the last video we cleared out our quest log and uh, today uh, my guest um, um, commentator is uh, gone to, uh, has gone back to work, I think. <coughs> I think he's in work today. Either that or he's about to complain royally at me. Um, so, yep, we had a good go at clearing out um, what we could of our quest log. So, what I'm going to do is go back to camp and talk to some of our um, uh, our companions. Dum da dum. Da 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 da. So let's so we'll see who's here to talk to. There's do the rounds. There is Stan. You called. Hmm. I have a question. I am hardly surprised. Oh, good. Uh, do you find Ferelden very strange? To put it lightly, no one has a place here. Your farmers wish to be merchants. The merchants dream of being nobles, and the nobles become warriors. No one is content to be who they are. Um... Don't Cunari ever want to change their lot in life? What does that accomplish? The farmer who buys a shop is never a merchant. He is always a farmer turned merchant. He carries his old life with him as a turtle carries its shell. Um, he might be happier. Happiness is fragile. Nothing can be built upon it that will last. Only duty endures. Okay then. You don't think happiness is important? You can learn to find it in doing your duty, in serving your people. There is no need to search for it. Shall we move on? Okay. Uh, you sound a bit homesick. Perhaps. It's strange to be in a crowd and hear a language that is not your own. To see faces that are and aren't like yours. I miss the smells of Saharon. Tea and incense and the sea. Ferelden smells of wet dogs. What's everyone say we smell? Uh, Ferelden smells of wet dog. Uh, dogs don't smell that bad. Skunks don't mind the smell of other skunks either. Shall we move on? Oh, thanks. Uh, is there anything you like about Ferelden? There is... interesting food here. You have a thing. It doesn't have a word in the Kunari tongue. Little baked things, like bread, but sweet and crumbly. Cookies? Yes. We have no such things in our lands. This should be remedied. I'll keep that in mind. Shall we move on? So Stan likes cookies. <laughs> okay. Speak then. Let's see. Then I suggest we move on. Well, I think, um... As you wish. That's all his questioning done. I can't believe he loves cookies, but, you know, each to his own. Let's see what Morrigan has to say. I await your command. Ah, so life in the wilds must have been very lonely. At times, perhaps. A world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, twas to the trees. And did they speak back? Don't be foolish. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. I can't imagine Flemeth was pleased. She was not. Flemeth was furious with me. 
I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. Um, but you were just a child. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons, I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. Uh, but you don't need to live that way any longer. Do I not? I am still an apostate mage, even if I have left the wilds. The darkspawn are yet undefeated. No, there is much that remains. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely, but such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror, but such fantasies have no place amidst reality. Okay, I'm fairly sure we gave her... Uh, let's have a look. Yes, we've already given her the mirror, which we found earlier. Um, which wouldn't, which we, I suspect, I think we've already got the quest thing for it, uh, the, the dialogue for it, so it's not, not a big, it's just different, different things ha, can happen at different times. Hello, Ogwen. That could have gone better. Sorry. There's plenty more, which you could try again. Let's try and be nice here. Nah, why bother? Once this blight thing's taken care of, the ladies will be all over me like flies on a corpse. Might as well rest up while I can. You ready to go? Uh, I'd like to know more about you. What about? It's funny how his hat comes off, his helmet comes off when you have these kind of conversations. Are you sure you're fine with what happened with Bronca? Oh, sure. I'm fine with it. I mean, she was a real firebrand between the sheets, but a bit soft in the skull, you know what I mean? Explains why she left, anyway. Uh, and you're not, so you're not broken up, broken up over it? I swear to the stone, the next time someone asks me that, I'll write my name in bruises on their ass. Ancestors, take me. You people whine like tea kettles around here. <laughs> ah, dear. You gotta love Ogwen. Well, sort of. Hello, Wynn. Thank you so much. Um, you're welcome. Well, this is about an Aran, I assume? Yes. You led me to an Aran. You persisted. Even though I was sure all you were going to find was a dead end. It always feels good to get resolution. I will never be able to repay you for what you've done for me. Finding an Aaron allowed me to bring that chapter of my life to a close. I feel free. A great weight has been lifted off my heart. This moment, it feels like the moment before the sunrise, when all the world is still, holding its breath, waiting for first light. I can stop thinking about my past and look forward to the future. Thank you, my friend. You will always have my gratitude. Okay. Uh Right. Hello, is everyone? What is your desire? Ah, uh, you can answer you can answer some questions. All right, but I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. <laughs> Why did you want to leave the crows exactly? Well, now. I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? Fair. Uh, but what would you rather do? Now that you mention it, I am not entirely certain. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased, for three sovereigns, I'm told, which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. The crows buy all their assassins that way, buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder, and if you do poorly in your training, you die. 
Uh, and that system works? Of course. You compete against your fellow assassins, and those who survive are rightfully proud of it. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect. It gets you wealth. It gets you women. And men. Or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. So what is it you fancy, exactly? At the moment, I happen to fancy you. Which is handy, as I happen to be following you about the countryside. That is, of course, presuming you don't decide to kill me at some point. It spoils the mood, I'm told. As for what I'll do in the future, presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself, for a change. Far away from Antiva, of course. For now, naturally, I go where you go. Okay. Won't the crows eventually find you? <laughs> eventually can be a very, very long time if one plays one's cards right. Come now, enough chit-chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. Oh dear. Now we have to be careful because everyone's heading down the romance path. Um, so let's have a quick look. We've got Wynne, who's warm. We've got Alistair, who is friendly. That's as high as you get, because I haven't initiated a romance with him. Uh, Liliana, which is love. Ogryn, which is warm. Morrigan, which is warm. Well, yeah, dog is always dog. <laughs> Sten, which is warm. And Zevran, which is key. Help! Yeah, so, um, we're doing pretty good, uh, regard to keep... Um, our, our uh, companions are all happy. Ask away. Oh. Um, <laughs> I had another dream about the Archdemon. I'm not going to start a, <laughs> a romance. Yes, me too. And I got the feeling at the end there that it saw us, was aware of us, whatever you want to call it. Could have just been my imagination, I suppose. What do you think? I think we need to be extra careful. I thought we were already being extra careful. Does that mean we have to be extra, extra careful now? Great. And there I was, enjoying my nap. I guess one thing is certain, at least, isn't it? It's official. This is a blight. Because we didn't know that already. And last but not least, let's talk to Liliana. Do you remember our discussion? Uh, what discussion? About Marjolaine and me, and my doubts about my path. I just wanted to tell you that I thought about what you told me, and you were right. Despite what Marjolaine says, I am not like her. I know that now. I have found peace in knowing the Maker, and nothing will change that. I've followed you to make the world a better place, and as long as I keep that in mind, I will not fall. Sometimes, it takes another to show us the truths we hide from ourselves. It was my pleasure. I'm glad I left Lothering in your company. You have proven a true friend, and I thank the Maker for you. Hmm. Only a friend? Well, aren't you sweet and attentive? Hmm. Let's go to bed. You want to... Are you sure? I'm sure. I knew you'd come around. Good things come to those who wait, no? You have no idea how good. Oh, now you've got me curious.
morning. Did you sleep well? I've been up for some time, but yes, I slept very well. I've just been watching you sleep. Did you know your eyelids flutter when you dream? And you have such pretty eyelashes. It's not just my eyelids. Eyelash, uh, my eyelash. Oh, blah, blah, blah. It's not just my lashes that are pretty. So I hear. I'm so happy, blissful. I haven't slept so well since I was forced to flee from Orlais. Knowing you will be the first thing I see when I wake gives me no small amount of comfort. I feel safe in your arms. Safe, loved and accepted. This is where I belong. Thank you. I should be the one thanking you. I suppose I should get up. We have a long day ahead of us. What's the hurry? Come on. Darkspawn await with bated breath for you to put them out of their misery. Oh right, blasted Darkspawn. I think it will be a beautiful day. There you go. You see, I've never followed that romance option. <laughs> oh, right. It's done. Rod, you can be happy now. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. Yes. Um, just want to go to Soldier's Peak on the way through to dump some stuff off. As you wish. Okay, what have I got in here? Uh, don't think that's gonna get used. Don't think mm, that might. What can I do for you, Warden? Uh, sell me stuff. Certainly. I just to sell that. What's Liliana using? Ah, right. Okay, so I don't need that. Ah, oh, so many arrows. <laughs> I'll have to parcel them out soon. Uh, right, let's have a look. See how much of this stuff is actually useful. Well, not that. Uh, I've got so much dragon bone that reaches the point of do I actually need any more of this silverite? More dragon bone coming. Right, I'm going to stick that in. Oh, it's actually... 
Oh, I have a monster staff. I don't want that. Okay. Let's clear some space at least. 